In the UK, the government has declared the coronavirus a serious and imminent threat. That gives authorities new powers to isolate those suspected of being infected. Four more people have tested positive in the UK, bringing the total number of cases there to eight. Derek Gatherer is a virologist at Lancaster University in the United Kingdom and joins me now live. Thank you for joining us here on the program. You know, this designation of a serious and imminent threat certainly sounds bad, but what is the risk to the general public at this point as we only have eight confirmed cases so far? Well, we've seen the, the threat level go up from, from low to moderate and now, and now to serious. So it, it's clear that, that, that there is some thinking that perhaps we might have more cases in the UK than, than are currently on the official list. This is something that we've, we've seen a lot of in every country. We know from the, the estimations that were done in the early stages of the outbreak in China that there was, there was a, a large amount of undercounting of cases in Wuhan based on the number of, of cases that were found in travellers out of China. So we, we think that we're not necessarily detecting everybody that has the virus and, and there may well be people that, that are in the community uh, in many countries uh, that, are, that have the virus and are undetected and the UK is, is no exception to that. So this is why the government is preparing for the, the possible reality that, that we will have ongoing transmission in the UK. How, however, it's worth saying that at, at the moment uh, that that is not confirmed and we, do, we don't know that that is the fact. So and um, people shouldn't, shouldn't overreact to this announcement of a, a serious or imminent threat. Right. The World Health Organization is warning that there are now cases of the virus spreading to people who have no history of travel to China. So this could mean that the transmission, as you said, is more widespread than reported. Do you think that that is the case? And how concerning would that be for the continued spread of the coronavirus, that there are potentially many people out there who don't know that they might have it and therefore wouldn't go to the hospital as quickly as if they you know, thought that it would be a concern? Uh, yes, it, w when you have people that don't have any connection at all with Wuhan, then, then it, it probably means that we have ongoing transmission in the community. Uh, a week or so ago, it was possible to say that virtually every case outside China had some obvious connection back to Wuhan. Uh, but we're now getting to the stage where that's becoming more and more difficult to make. Uh, with some of the cases. Um, uh, some of the British cases are connected to Wuhan only ve very, very, uh, on very long transmission chains that go back through Singapore. So it, it looks as if the virus may actually be escaping the grasp of, of, of the Chinese authorities, even though they've gone to extreme lengths to, to quarantine the city. We've never seen anything like this kind of effort to contain a virus within one country before. Um, and things, things are still uh, on a knife edge yet. We don't know whether it will be successful in the end or not, but it, it, respiratory viruses are really very difficult to contain. And other countries are now seriously entertaining the possibility that the virus may already have, have uh, slipped the grasp uh, of the Chinese and, and maybe spreading in other countries. Yeah, nevertheless, though, we still are not seeing the virus spread rapidly um, outside China the way that we have seen it within China with these, you know, 40,000 people confirmed to be infected, more than 900 um, killed. What does that say about the spread of this virus? Do you think that these extreme measures that China is doing, these quarantine measures, are at least containing it to a certain degree? It's possible that that might be the case, um, but but we, we'll only really know when we if we see the numbers of cases starting to decline in China. Um, and now there have been some suggestions that that that, that is the case. That uh, today it was reported that the number of new cases had fallen slightly, but we have to be careful interpreting those statistics because all, often what they can indicate is that there's simply a backlog in testing of samples. As the uh, number of cases increases, then then the the testing labs find it harder and harder to keep up with testing all the samples and if things are not being reported uh, as fast as they should be it doesn't necessarily indicate that there, there are genuinely fewer cases in the community. On the other hand, if, if the, there is cause for optimism here and the, the, the outbreak is peaking in, in Wuhan, it, it might well mean that the number of travel related cases emerging from China and traveling to other countries will, will also start to decrease. And that means that the risk of uh, new imported cases to other countries will decrease. What the other countries will then have to worry about is the, any local transmission chains that have developed uh, in their country in, in the meantime. All right, we'll leave it on that uh, positive note there. Derek Gatherer joining us from Lancaster University in the United Kingdom. My pleasure.